The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at dallasgenealogy.org. Well, I think it is 11 o'clock, and so that is time for us to get going. And Good morning, everybody. My name is Tony Hansen. I am the president of the Dallas Genealogical Society, and I welcome those of you who are here in person, as well as those of you who are joining us online. Have a bit of business to get through. I do want to remind you that we did send out the minutes from our previous meeting, the September 9th meeting, and those are always available on our website. If you go look at the events, general next general meeting tab, you will see all of the information about the previous meeting and can read the meeting minutes there. So unless there are any changes or corrections to those minutes, we will just assume they are correct as posted. And hearing none, we will move on. Our secretary has posted our financial standings, and we're still in pretty good shape financial-wise. Uh, we have, at the moment, about 15000 in our checking account, 115000 in our savings account, and 46000 in our investment account, which we're in the process of making some changes to. So we're going to be um, moving that money around a bit, and we'll have more to say about that next month once we've got things a little more finalized. Hopefully, you're all aware that we had a very successful North Texas Giving Day campaign. Hopefully that you all heard about it. Many of you here I know contributed to it. And I want to thank you again for supporting it so generously. We had a little more than $1,000 donated before the North Texas Giving Day event itself kicked off. We used that for matching funds, which was quite successful in getting people to then donate on North Texas Giving Day. People tend to look for uh, organizations that have matching funds up and, and attract, are attracted to that, and they were. So we had a total of $3,316 donated for the entire campaign. And we're very, again, grateful for that. We had a goal of a little more. We're ambitious. We're looking for six thousand, but uh, the North Texas Giving Day is going to fund about half of the cost of providing the newspaper archive and the history geo databases that are accessible right here on the eighth floor in the library, which is where we're meeting today, by the way, for those of you virtually, um, and also available to anybody who has a uh, Dallas Library card. And I've got more to say about that in a slide or two. I do want to remind you that if you are registering for the Texas State Genealogical Society annual conference, if you register with our TIPS code, which is DGS, we will receive a $10 donation for everybody who registers using that code. So I would encourage you to do that. We have some volunteer opportunities, uh, more than we want. I want to, first of all, announce that Brenda Cannon, who was our seminar administrator, has announced her intention to step back from that position, although she's still going to hang in there and continue to run the African American group. And we welcome her for that and thank her for all the hard work she's put in in the seminars for the last couple of years. Jim Thornhill has also announced his retirement from the Society too, effective October 2nd. And again, I want to thank Jim for his contributions dating back to 2017. He was our Director of Information Technology for four years, Vice President for a couple of years, and just finished up his term as President for two years as well. So Jim's got some other things he wants to pursue in life, and we wish him a lot of success. And again, send him off with our heartfelt thanks for all the things that he did for us over the years. <laughs> I'd also like to announce uh, Linda Harrison has agreed to be our, our National Genealogical Society delegate. So she's going to be stepping up into that and just keeping us informed and aware of what's going on. In addition to uh, the other thing, which you may not know, she's been helping me out as kind of a backup NEON administrator and learning how to run the ins and outs of that system, too. So, Linda, we welcome you to your new role, and thank you for all that you've been doing for that. So Linda's back here so we can all see who she is. But of course, we still have now a few more openings. So we are looking for somebody to step into the role of our seminar administrator. That's kind of the, the tactical hands-on running of each of, our, of the seminars that we have. Uh, working with the vice president, uh, Sharon Bowles, who kind of does the strategic side of it, the planning, lining up the speakers and what have you. Director of Information Technology just kind of helps keep all of this stuff organized and uh, helps our, the technology side of it. Uh, publica publication content helps keep our publications consistent across all the different printed and electronic platforms. And TXSGS Society Delegate is just a, a pretty easy job, just keeping us informed of the things going on in the TXSGS, making sure they know our positions on things and what have you. So, again, if you're interested in any of those positions, we'd sure appreciate hearing from you. We're not the only ones looking for volunteers. The Dallas Public Library also has a lot of things that they have going on that they welcome volunteers for. And they have just recently announced a really interesting deal for us. So, you know, one of the things that those of us live in Dallas covet is our library card. It gives us access to the things here, it gives us access to the online databases that we can access from home. Well, they have now announced a program. Actually, I think it's been going on for a while. But if you volunteer for the library and perform some duties for them, after 20 hours of service, you can earn a Dallas library card regardless of where you live. 
that's a, a pretty good deal. The thing that's new is that qualifying DGS events will also count towards that volunteer time. So, for example, you can see we've got some volunteers sitting over here. They happen to live in Dallas, so they're not really excited about this. But if you want to help us run our meetings, uh, Paul Feather's on and doing our questions and answerings for us right now on, on the uh, Zoom bridge. If you want to perform some of the things like that for uh, some of the in-person meetings that are kind of co-sponsored between the Dallas Public Library and us, again, that counts towards the volunteer time and will help you earn that uh, library card that much quicker. You can, of course, also volunteer in person here. They've got lots of things going on right here on the 8th floor. You can show up in person. Even if you already have a library card, that's a good thing to do, and I encourage you to do it. So, again, just want to emphasize that some of the DGS events are some of the many events that Stephanie's got lined up. She's working on more, so she wants to keep us all busy, and we want to be, keep her happy. So please uh, think about that. If you're interested in volunteering, if you go to our website, go to events, get involved, and DPL volunteer page, you will see there's inf uh, information on how to sign up and uh, become part of this program. And if I know somebody's going to ask, past events don't count. Sorry, this has to be things that you've done going forward. Many of you would have, many of you would have a lifetime pass. I know already. So but you've got to earn it going forward. Um, we're in the the Lloyd uh, Dewitt box stock section of the library. You, many of you knew Lloyd. Most of us, I think, know what he meant to the genealogy community. Uh, we're going to be nominating him for the National Genealogy Society Hall of Fame Award. They have a five-year grace period after somebody passes on before they're eligible for nomination, and, and Lloyd is up for it this year. So we will be submitting a nomination. They do allow for letters of support, and so we've already reached out in the genealogy, genealogical community for some people who knew Lloyd. A lot of people here in New Lloyd as well. So if you would like to write a letter of support, we would welcome it. Uh, you can just send it to me. We'll be putting that all together with our package, which has to be submitted by the end of December. So you've got a little bit of time to think of just how you went to word that. But we would, again, welcome support, letters of support from anybody that, that knew and uh, appreciated Lloyd and all that he did for us and all that he did for genealogy. How about if we get a, a microphone on you and we can? Are you talking about in, in the letter? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, the, all, so the question was, can I mention all that he did for me? And absolutely. I mean, the, the letter support can be anything that you want. Um, there's, I mean, you've given the you know, the NGS page that kind of describes the award, what it's intended for and all that. We have a, a page on our website as well that lists many awards that Deloitte had received. It's uh, outlines many of his presentations and, and other things too. So if you want to be familiar with what the award is all about, and some of the things Lloyd has done, that'll give you a little bit of ammunition. But yeah, I think personal stories about how Lloyd impacted your life. I mean, the fact that I've got a book here with my name in it that Lloyd donated just it touches me. I mean, he he did that when I was a nobody. I just started with the society and I got a notice from the library that, you know, somebody donated a book and I oh, got that wrong. I didn't buy a book. And I called and said, well, no, Lloyd did that for you. Just, you know, noticed what you did and appreciated you. I didn't even know that he knew who I was. So anyway, a great guy and well worthy of the, of the nomination and we'll keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully you're all aware that we have a number of special interest groups that have been meeting over the summer and will continue to meet throughout the year. And again, if you go into our website under calendar and the special interest groups, you will see all of the meetings listed there and information about how to participate in those. We have some coming up. The Mac Chan Reunion Group is meeting October 14th, the Jewish Special Interest Group on the 19th, the African American Group on the 21st, and the German Group, which meets every other month, will be meeting on November 11th. So those are all you know, quite interesting organizations and groups to be part of, and I encourage you to Stop in and see what they've got to share with you. The Dallas Public Library has a number of things going on as well. So they've been doing presentations and uh, continuing to do them. So on October 17th, they're doing genealogy research using funeral home records. On the 29th, preserving your family recipes, which is an in-person one only. On the 14th, it's the Veterans Oral History Project, the Dallas Public at the Library, of course. Uh, the 28th is Tell Your Family Stories. And on the 12th, Researching Holiday Traditions. So those are all things usually up here on the eighth floor, but lots of interesting topics and fun to read about. We've also got the, the Family History Day going on on October 20th. That's a day-long event. That's the uh, event that's been organized by Bill Buckner out of the Waco Public Library. And they have a series of, of presentations throughout the day. And the, the Dallas Public Library is uh, participating in that as well. So there'll be presentations from 9 o'clock on to about 5 or 6 o'clock. We'll be a part of that. We're going to have an information desk set up here. We'll be answering questions about you know general genealogy as well as the DNA, and we are looking for some volunteers. There's a, a volunteer sign up slot on the website, so if you'd like to come in and sign up for a one or two hour window and can be up here 
as people have questions about their, their DNA or their genealogy, just kind of make them aware of who we are and help them get started, we would welcome you as volunteers. Just found out this morning, late breaking news, uh, if you're a subscriber to 23andMe, they apparently had a pretty major security breach. So uh, we just heard about this. Uh, Nick Barnett came over and made me aware of it this morning. Um, there's been no announcements from 23andMe yet. He shared with me a posting that uh, Roberta Estes on our DNA Explained blog site. Um, apparently, people have gotten in. They have gotten access to your credentials. They've even gone in and have changed some of the information about uh, about your account. So it seems like a fairly major event. So I would encourage you, if you have a 23andMe account, to get in there and maybe change your password. And hopefully, it's a unique password, and it's not going to get replicated someplace else. So just a word to the wise. Uh, like I said, I've not seen anything from 23andMe yet, but I would just keep my ear to the ground and... and See what's going on with that. Uh, today, following the meeting, stick around. There's going to be a, a scanning event. So there's going to be right here on the eighth floor, your opportunity to learn a bit more, a little bit more about the Vivid Picks tool that the Dallas Public Library has purchased and is part of. And so I would encourage you to stick around after this meeting and be part of that as well. This has been a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your fees have been supporting these and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, please consider joining now. Go to dallasgenealogy.org and click on the membership tab.